can't sleep either. Oh, Richie, don't do that. Sorry. What are we going to do? Leave it to me, Sarah. It's not your problem. Scott saw us. This is Scott Windsor we're talking about. The son of the one person who'd really like to see me suffer in this village. Oh, I'll, I'll talk to him. It'll be fine, I promise you. Sarah. I can't bear to see you like this. Mummy, I've got a headache. Hey, up on your own, are you, Joseph? Top driving, kid. Morning. Uh, Chris left a yellow folder here somewhere. On the side. Oh, come on, Joseph. You need to eat your breakfast. What's up with you? You look terrible. Oh, thank you. What's up? Mm, some kind of tummy bug. You don't want to know the details. Mm. Problem is, I don't think I'm safe to drive, and he's supposed to be in school by nine. Well, I'll take him in, but uh, Chris is screaming for this. I'll take him if you like. Oh, I don't know. It's no trouble. You want Aunt Frankie to take you to school, don't you, Joseph? Great. Sorted. Morning, Dad. Dad, we have to talk about last week. You can't keep this up forever. Somebody speak. It will butch, Mr Dingle. He knows it will butch, you daft dimmock. Deep breath, turn around and start again. You what? It's what my gran used to say when I got into sulks. Like you and Butch's dad here. Quiet, lass. Not a dingle yet. And when you are cheek like that, you'll feel the back of my hand. If you ever touch my Emily, I'll crush you. Oh, listen to the big man. Hey, you took your belt to me once, Dad. But I'm not scared of you anymore. I'm older. I'm wiser. Up here, where it counts. Oh, yeah! Smack him, Zack. I don't want to fight you. But it's like you've lost the plot, Dad. I don't have to talk to you. OK. Don't, then. Why should I care? But there is someone you should be talking to, isn't there, Dad? Eh? I never thought I'd live to see this. Zack Dingle being pushed around by his own son. Nobody tells me what to do! Nobody! I don't know. This family's gone soft. Who said you could come in here? Surprised to find you on your own. You've been giving it some with a new girlfriend. Get lost, Scott. Not a good idea. I mean, where's an unemployed person like me gonna go, eh? I could go around the Sugdens and fill Jack in with a bit of local news. Look, Scott, I've been meaning to ask you as a friend, well, as a mate, really. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a minute. You shafted me over this place. So I'm not in the market for doing favours, not right now. OK, what do you want? What's owed to me, that's all. And what makes you so sure I'm going to give you anything? Maybe me and Sarah don't care who finds out about us. Oh, really? Oh, OK, well, who's first then? Betty? Oh, well, Mum, she likes a good gossip. All right, all right. Just, just give me a day, yeah? Let me sort a couple of things out. OK. All right, I'll come back tomorrow. You better hope I'm feeling generous. It's Norrie. No, Nelly, wait, wait. I was just wondering if that could look after Belle for the day. I'm that behind my work. You wouldn't believe it. You've got a nerve, Lisa Clegg. What's going on? Don't worry your head, Butch. I've got her sorted. No, Mum, look. Come on, you stay out of this. Don't talk to me like that, Butch Dingle. Hey, don't touch me. Don't ever do that again. Now, Lisa, look, what do you want? Is Zach around? No, he's, uh, he's gone out in the van. Oh, Butch, the conference. Aye. It was a bit of a disaster, weren't it? No, Butch, you were right. I mean, I'm up to here with work at the moment, but I've got to get things sorted with Zach for Belle's sake, if nothing yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure Mr Dingle feels the same. Are you? No. 
Well, if he sees that, tell him we're asking after him. Will do. Wait, Lisa. What? We'll look after Belle. Won't we, Butch? Will we? <sighs> Come on, love. We. <laughs> I'll get the pram. <laughs> Pete! Chris? I've just had Gartside Engineering on the phone. You're supposed to be there an hour ago. Well, you give me a truck and I'll be on my way. Oh, no. Well, what's that, a Tonka toy? It's not serviced. What? Maintenance form. This is only filled in, these bits. Looks fine to me. Yeah, but she hasn't signed it off, has she? And what about that? Well, she's probably forgotten to fill in that bit. She was working on it last week. Yeah, she told me she was running a bit behind. Has it been giving you any trouble? No? Then I will double check with Lisa when I see her, okay? Yeah. Okay. Good. Actually, Chris, this is a bit iffy, you know. Can we get these systems sorted out? This kind of thing's a bit dodgy on insurance, know what I mean? Well, you talk to Sean, that's his department. Right. Well, don't just hang around, get a move on. Where is Sean? He's not here. I'll ring him. Will you give me a break? No, I'll hold my hands up. Lisa has let us all down. I'm looking for someone to take over the service contract as we speak. But we've got a lot of work on right now. I need your help. What else can I say? If there's anything left to do, well, I'll make sure she does it first thing, OK? Yeah, OK. Just this once, Chris. Good man. Won't forget it. You know, you're exhausted smoking. Oh. Get that scene to remember you. <laughs> Cheers, Pete. No problem. See you later. See ya. How was that? That was great. Is it really true your dad won't let you go on buses? Better than school, eh? Can we go on another one? Sure, we've been all over the county. Even I've had enough of buses for one morning. Oh. Come on. Last one to swings is a mouldy sandwich. I know you don't much care what people think of you, but the very least you could do for the village is to appear to take their complaints seriously. Why? I've heard it all before. I'm bored with it. All this bad feeling, it isn't going to go away. In fact, if you carry on like this, it's going to get worse, much worse. Marvellous. You know, there's nothing I enjoy more than winding up a few bleeding heart do-gooders. Chris! Cathy! You want to make an enemy out of me, you are going the right way about it. I love you when you're angry. Don't patronise me. OK. Let's talk. I'm sorry? Over dinner. No, not over dinner. This has nothing to do with you and me. OK, you, you come back on... Wednesday, 11. I've got an hour clear. Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh. Emily. Hey. I want four. Two boys. Two girls. If my mum hadn't died, I'm sure she'd have had more. I hate it being an only child. Sometimes I'd lay in bed at night just pretending I'd got all these brothers and sisters. There were four of us to start with. Our oh, Ben died. I would say that she's long gone. And now Sam's in prison. We won't let anything like that happen to our family. Will we, Butch? No. We'll just get my dad and Lisa sorted and everything will be perfect. What about my dad? Actually, I, uh, I think he might be all right and all. How'd you make that out? Well, he don't know about us going to get married, does he? If he knew we were going to do that, do it proper like, then maybe he might change his mind about me. Maybe. We'll go and find him. I'll ask for your hand in marriage. Church wedding and everything. You'll like that, won't he? Butch. Yes, him. About having kids and that. And you know, I'm glad we waited. 
Aye. I know most people don't. They don't reckon marriage means much. It does to me. I know. And when we do it... I mean, do it, do it. It's all right, Emma. I, I, I know what you mean. Well, it'd be right special. Yeah. It'll be to start our family. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph. Chips, chips and more chips. Yum. Maybe none of my business, but shouldn't young Joseph be in school? I was right. Chris will do his nut. We've had a very busy morning, me and Joseph. I've told him everything I know about trucks, road signs, engines, you name it. And after lunch, we're going into Otten to look at the bus depot. Now, if that ain't educational, I don't know what is. Oh, he looks happy enough to me. Aye, there's more to life than sitting in a classroom all day. Well, rather you than me when uh, young Joseph tells Daddy about his day out with Auntie Frankie. I can handle Chris, as long as you don't stir it. I know nothing. Lisa? Is that... No, look, don't say out. I've not come here to apologise. And I've not come because I've been taking marriage guidance lessons off that Judas of a son of mine. That... Listen to me, woman. Look, I didn't ask Nelly to come back. And any idiot can see it's caused a skip load of trouble. What you and me have, what with Bell and that, well, I've never been happier. But, uh, and it's a big but, Nelly and me go back a long way. And I can't say I don't have feelings for her, because I do. We had four kids and a lifetime together. I can't just pretend that never happened. The thing is, it's you and Belle I want. And it's you I'm going to have if I've got out to do with it. It could just take me a while. Now, there's not someone I can just kick out on the street. Give me some time. And I'll sort some out. It's my best offer. Okay. Right. Zach. What? Make it up with Butch. Maybe. Don't let him get wet under a cloud. All you've got to do is get across the farmer's field without him catching you. OK? OK. Is she OK to be out? Yeah, yeah. I've got to take her into Hotton to get her some medicine. Besides, I had to see you, Richie. It's driving me crazy. I saw Scott. And what did he say? I tried it on a bit. What's he going to do? Nothing. Well, he said that. No, not exactly, but who's going to believe him? I mean, they'll think he's making it up just to spite me. But he hasn't, has he? No. Why don't we just let him say what he wants? I mean, maybe it's the best thing. I'm sick of hiding, Sarah. Oh, no, Richie. I'm not ready for this. Not yet. <laughs> Keeping you up, Alan. Oh, I do apologise. I had rather a late night. Mm. Well, you and Mum weren't back by the time I'd gone to bed. That was past one o'clock. Well, I hope you don't mind my saying so, but your mother has an insatiable appetite for revelry. <laughs> Believe me, Alan, you're not the first man to call my mother insatiable. Please. I beg your pardon. No, nothing. No, sorry. Yes, you did. You were going to make a snide remark. <laughs> sorry not. <laughs> oh, fascinating as this conversation is, I, I must make a move. The GK bus leaves at two and it won't get anywhere without me. <laughs> uh, I'll come at all if it's all right. But I won't be going to the supermarket. If you get me drift. Yeah, I just drive the bus. Yeah. Ooh, you're enjoying that, Joseph? Better than school dinners, eh? Mm. He took kiddo and missed the bus. Because I don't like that comic. But it's got all these games. I'll read you the story on the bus. Hey, 
If you think I'm supplying the entertainment while you patronise a rival retail outlet, then you can get lost. You need help, Viv. Come on, Victoria. We'll get a comic in Hotton. Oh, I don't think so. Right. Anyone for GK Supermarket? Oh, no, you don't, Alan Turner. Oh, Viv, there is no point in making another scene. Don't you think I'm going to give up just because you find it a little bit embarrassing? I find it embarrassing and all. Good. But, but take no notice of her, ladies and gentlemen. You won't look so smug when I've gone out of business. No village shop and GK will be charging exorbitant prices for this service. I guarantee it. Love, Mum. <laughs> The only person you are harming is yourself. This bus is here to stay, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Oh, isn't there? Vivian, is this really necessary? I'm not just doing this for me. What's going on? What are you doing here? It's only two o'clock. They closed the school. What? There was a fire in the boiler room. They sent us all home. Look, I've got to go into Hotton. Can you take Victoria back with you? She's still not well. I suppose. If I want to come with you. Yeah, we've, um, we've got loads of extra homework. Please. Oh, OK. See you. Hello. What's up? Why didn't you tell me that Frankie took Joseph to school this morning? I didn't think anything of it. Why? Is there a problem? Well, that was Claudia. You see, she's been sick all day. She wants me to go and pick him up. All right, well, uh, why don't I go and pick him up? What's going on? Nothing. You are a terrible liar, Terry. <sighs> Frankie were in the wool pack at lunchtime with Joseph. <sighs> They've been playing on the buses all morning. I don't believe this. And she mentioned something about uh, taking them to Otten for this afternoon. Right. I'm going to try and retrieve my son before Frankie drops him down some manhole or something. You are going to take my calls. Right. I'm surrounded by idiots. Then will you stop being so childish? I've got a bus full of people here. And I, I am not moving. It's my library. It's going right before my eyes. What's going on, Donna? I don't want to go home. Mum's making a prat of herself again. Yeah. It's so embarrassing. Do you like the Beck CD? Yeah, it's OK. Well, it's just he's doing some gigs. Do you want to come and see him with me? Yeah. Great. Well, would you like to come in hot and see if they've got any tickets left? Are you kidding? Mum would murder me. Yeah, I reckon. Well, uh, I'd better go do it then. I'll ring you later, yeah? Yeah. Sorry, Kathy, love, I can't even look at it till tomorrow. That's no problem. I'll bring it back in the morning. Well, I wouldn't drive it if I were you. Oh, I need to get to the bank. Well, it's up to you, but you don't want the engine seizing. No, you're right. No, it's OK. I'll nip in on the bus. No, you better run. Yeah, see you tomorrow. All right, I'll do it for you first thing tomorrow. Hi, Lisa. Butch. Butch, I've seen your dad. I think it's going to be all right. What happened? I'll tell you later tonight, only I was due at Tate Hall. It's the middle of yesterday. All oh, right. Uh, actually, Lisa, um, we was wondering if we could borrow the van for a couple of hours. No chance, sorry. Bye bye, Poppy. Why are we waiting? We are suffocating. Uh, you haven't got room for two more on a little one, have you? Eh? If you don't move in 30 seconds, I am sending for the police. <laughs> please, Mrs Windsor, please. This is your job I'm fighting for as well, you know. I know, Mrs Windsor. Look, if you do a protest tomorrow, I'll come and help you if you like. It's just right now, me and Butch will need to get into town. Oh, Emily! Butch is going to ask me dad for me and in marriage. Why won't anybody listen? To me! Why doesn't anybody care? Come on. Come on. Hey. Hey.
Thank you, Emily. Hey, Emily. They've, uh, they've only got one seat on the bus left. Maybe we should leave it till tomorrow, eh? No, you go. I'd like to get it sorted. Are you sure? It's probably best you see me dad on your own. Come on, Butch. Get a move on. OK. Before Viv changes her mind. We'll be nice to him. I will. I promise. See you later. Hey. You'll be good for your auntie Anne, do you hear? Yeah. See you Bye. later. Bye bye. <laughs> You'll regret this, all of you. Do you want to get yourself killed? Round and round, the wheels on the bus. This is Windsor. Please. Why don't we go in the wool pack and have a little something to cheer you up? continues tomorrow at 7.